Does anybody know what kind of what breed that, uh, dog that is? Not a German Shepherd. That was a trick question. Not a Malamute. That's a Belgian Malinois. <laughs> We'll pull them out and then move them out onto a hospital stretcher. All right, we're here with Katherine Johnston from Earhart, and they brought their helicopter out today. Katherine, tell us about how you became uh, involved in uh, flying a helicopter as a nurse. I did, well, let's see, like back in graduated nursing in 2012 and knew this was my in one of my goals to become, and I had to have get through nursing school, did three years critical care experience in the ER, and started applying and doing advanced certifications and educating myself as much as possible to take this job. Wow, what an exciting job and you're, you're saving lives and I understand you work out of the Mariana Airport and you work a 24 hour shift, is that right? Yes, we work 24 hours on, 24 hours off, and then 24 hours back on. Okay, so, so you, where did you go to nursing school? Eastern Kentucky University. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to Florida, or what's left of it. But um, so, how long does it take you to, after you become a nurse, how much experience do you need to get on a helicopter? So, you need three years critical care. So, that's going to be emergency department, ICU, CCU, any of that. And then, once you get three years there, that you can qualify to start applying for here. Um, you don't, it's preferred to have a bachelor's, but you don't have to, like I have an associate's. And then, you have your advanced certifications and trauma courses. Right. Fantastic. Well, Catherine, thanks for coming out today. And um, I I've had family members on life flights before, so we appreciate what you do to save lives. I appreciate it. All right, we're here with Josh Dancy from NAFCO. Josh, tell us what y'all are doing here today. We are here with the Lion Mobile Fire Experience. This is a portable um, fire experience trailer to where we've got digital props, we've got live fire props. A uh, number of different types of training products that we do and offer, from fire extinguisher training to um, advanced hose line training systems, uh, and a little bit in between. We got some gas trainers, uh, large helicopter props, the whole nine yards. So we. So if if a if a candidate is in an academy, a fire academy, they might use some of your training projects to learn how to fight fires. Yes, sir. That would be correct. And we've got a lot of folks wearing our turnout gear, our boots, our helmets, and our gloves. So we're okay. kind of a full service. Uh, company that offers everything from the basics from head to toe fire gear to state-of-the-art training equipment. All right. Well, thanks for coming today. We appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you guys. All right, we're here with Charlie Brunner, and he is the Fire and Rescue Chief for Jackson County. How you doing today, Charlie? Doing well, thank you. How are you? All right, so we're out here today trying to uh, enlighten young people about the idea of getting into the first responder business. Tell us about the opportunities you have in Jackson County. In Jackson County, we're continuously hiring. There is what we call a shortage in the Panhandle area for both EMTs, paramedics, and firefighters. Uh -huh. um, a lot of the employees are now retirement eligible, so we're seeing some openings come up through retirement. So we're trying to recruit on the back end, get these people into the Chipola programs, and then try to keep them local here with local jobs. Okay. Um, so if a student wanted to get into the first responder business, what is the, what's the shortest course that they could take to, to get involved in this? The shortest course is the beginning, which is the emergency medical technician, the EMT program. And we do hire EMT uh, right out of school. It's a 16 week, which is one college semester program. They're eligible to take their national registry, which is their boards right after the program. And as soon as they get their registry, we hire them right in and uh, put them on an ambulance and start okay. working. And then how easy is it to transition into becoming a paramedic? Uh, very easy. Once they get 240 hours of working, which is about a month full time, of working on the ambulance. Uh, they're eligible to go to the paramedic program, which we do offer here at Chipola program that I went to and pretty much my entire department went to. Very 
uh, well-respected program. It's a year-long program, but it has, it's packed full of knowledge, and uh, a lot of departments in the Panhandle have hired Chipola paramedic graduates. Fantastic. Well, Charlie, thanks for bringing your group out today, and we appreciate what you do for Jackson County. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having us. We appreciate it. All right, we're here with Brian Mitchell, and he is an arson specialist, but tell us who you're with, Brian. I'm with the Division of Investigative Forensic Services, Bureau of Fire and Arson Explosive Investigations out of Tallahassee Field Office, Tallahassee. All right, now what do you guys do? We're arson uh, and explosive crimes investigators, uh, and part of my uh, duties is on the bomb squad with the state. Okay. Now you started um, as a fireman at Chipola College, is that right? Actually, we're law enforcement, so I started law enforcement here uh, in Jackson County, and then I moved to Tallahassee uh, five years ago. Fantastic. Now, if somebody was interested in this in this career field, what would they need to do? Uh, this is a unique career field. There's only 3,100 people in the whole nation that are actually bomb techs. But become a law enforcement officer, get on with an agency that has a bomb squad, try out, and see what happens. All right. So, uh, what what goes on in the in the a day in the life of somebody in your business? So every every week we we train we train um a lot and uh, we train for in, in certain locations throughout the state. We do a lot of um, um events throughout the state. So we train different locations in the state, and we try to emulate what might happen, okay. and try to think of the worst and train on that situation. Now, what is this machine right here? This is our robot. This uh, this actually travels everywhere I go. It's in my vehicle at all times. And uh, we utilize this robot to disrupt the package. Um, that way we don't have anything that goes boom. Fantastic. Well, Brian Mitchell here representing the arson uh, investigation industry. Yes, and uh, and we, we're so glad you came today. Thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you. All right, we're here with Lindsay Batchelor. She's the PIO for Walton County Sheriff's Department. Thanks for coming today. Thank you for having us. Now, what kind of opportunities do we have for students in Walton County to work for the Sheriff's Department? So um, we're actually hiring for a lot of different positions, uh, law enforcement, uh, detention deputies, so you can work in the jail. Um, we're hiring fire rescue. So. Um, our firefighters are dual certified, so they're firefighters and they're EMTs and, and or paramedics. Um, we're also hiring at the animal shelter, if you like playing with puppies, or animal control. Okay. Um, so the sheriff's office actually encompasses a lot, of, a lot of different roles, and we have a lot of great opportunities for people to start a career and grow their career. All right. Now tell us about your relationship with Chipola College. Do y'all get some uh, cadets right out of Chipola College in law enforcement, firefighting? Absolutely, yes. We have, we have a lot of um, members of our road patrol and fire rescue that came from this college. We actually have two paramedics in the paramedic school right now at oh, Chipola College. Okay. Fantastic. And how long does it take for someone to, to get certified? And do you guys offer help for helping people get certified as, as EMTs, as paramedics, as correctional officers? Yes, we do. Um, we will actually sponsor uh, some select people to go to the academy, whether it be the law enforcement academy, academy the fire academy. Um, we currently, like I said, we're sending two firefighters through paramedic school. They're EMTs now, and they, they want to become paramedics. Um, so we will sponsor that. Well, from Walton County, we appreciate you very much for coming with us today. Thank you so much for having us. All right, we're here with Susanna Stevens and Eli Burkhead from the FWC. Susanna, tell us about your career with the FWC. Thank you for having us. I'm actually the Northwest Region Recruiter for the Panhandle. My area is from Jefferson County to Escambia County. So I, I go around to events like these, uh, colleges, outreach events, and so forth, trying to get the word out that you know we are hiring and a great agency to work for. So if a young person wanted to become a Florida Wildlife Officer, uh, how long is the education and what kind of background do they need? So our current requirements are 18 years old to apply, 19 at the time of hire. Uh, minimum requirements are high school diploma or a GED. Uh, good moral character. There are some disqualifiers, but at this time, that's our current requirements to get hired. Okay. And how long is the academy? Academy, if you are not certified or come to us already as a law enforcement officer for the state of Florida, it's six and a half months. Okay. We will pay for the training. It's located a little bit west of Tallahassee. We'll put you through all the training that's required. We'll also start paying you in a salary the day that you start the academy. Fantastic. All right. Uh, Mr. Burkhead, tell us about your career. 
Uh, I work Jackson, Calhoun County. Um, it's a great job. We're we're up here in the north end of Florida, so we target a bunch of hunting violations, you know, freshwater fishing violations. We do you know, search and rescues on a monthly basis. It seems like um, we just that's the kind of stuff we target up here, and it's it's a great career. Yeah, you know, right. it is what you make of it. Now, how did you decide to get involved with the FWC? I was always interested in the outdoors. You know, I, the job kind of fascinated me. Where you know you get out and kind of do whatever you want when it comes to being in the outdoors and checking hunting license and fishing license was just attractive to me. Yeah. Just sounded like a good career, so I went and tackled it. That's great. Well, guys, thank you all so much for coming today. And um, if you're interested in a career with the FWC, contact Susan, Susanna Stevens, and, um, and, and get involved. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right, we're here with Becky Thor from the Panama City Police Department. Becky, what brings you to Mariana today? Oh, we're just out here hoping to recruit some students and let them know that they can start a career with our agency, and we have 15 open positions right now. 15 open positions. What's the start and pay down there in Panama City? Start and pay is $37,713 if you come as an officer. If you come in as a TEA, which I'll explain what that is as well, it's $32,000 and some change. If you come in as a TEA, what we're essentially doing is we're paying for your hours that you're in the academy, and then you come train with our agency to make up the hours to get you to 40, and you have full benefits with our agency as well. Wow. And a student can, can enroll in a law enforcement training program here at Chipola. About how long does that take? Um, I believe here at Chipola it's like six months to 13, it depend, 13 months, depending on if you go day or night. All right. And I know the money people here, and we do have plenty of scholarships available, so it's a quick path to thirty-two to $37,000, definitely. All Absolutely. right. Well, thanks for coming today. Thank you. All right, I'm here with Tyler Roberts from ACI, and he has a bloodhound today, is that right? Yes, sir. And what do y'all do with these dogs? We use these dogs to track suspects for, it may be a county sheriff's office or FHP or FWC, whichever ones may need for, uh, and it's not only for criminal, it's uh, also for missing people and adults, elderly folks. Fantastic. And, uh, also children. Okay. Now, um, are you a certified law enforcement officer who just has, had an interest in canines? Uh, yes, sir. Um, from the time I started working with the prison, I always wanted to get on the K-9 team. So uh, once I got the opportunity to do it, I jumped on as quick as I could. Okay. All right. And we're all familiar with the Blake Shelton song. Is this old Red himself right here? This was named Fred. Okay, Fred. And now how often do you all dispatch your, your tracking unit? Um, really, it's just whenever uh, agency calls us for our assistance. Um, we train with them every day. Uh, other than that, you know, if an inmate escapes from the prison or county jails, that's what we do. Okay. If we're not helping a, another All right. agency. All right. So if uh, if a young person is interested in working with canines and in protecting the public, do you think this would be a good career? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's awesome. All I, right. I enjoyed it a lot. Great. All right. Thanks for coming today. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, we're here with Mike Dickinson from Global Medical Response. Uh, tell us about your business. We are the largest medical transportation company in the world, 38,000 employees. We're across the United States in 46 states, maybe 47 now. We have ground ambulance, air, and uh, fire under our oversight. Fantastic. So what areas do you serve in the Panhandle of Florida? We're in Bay County, Santa Rosa, Escambia. We also uh, are over into Baldwin County, Alabama, but all the way down into the peninsula of Florida, Miami, Orlando, Tampa, St. Pete. Fantastic. So we're here today trying to encourage young people to uh, get a job in the first responder industry. So uh, what would be your advice to someone looking to get into the, uh, to the, the res first responder EMS business? Uh, we have a variety of career opportunities starting at EMTs, uh, advanced EMTs, paramedics, flight medics, uh, flight nurses, because uh, we have the air business as well. Uh, visit globalmedicalresponse.com to visit all of those career sites that are listed on the website. All right, we're here with an EMT and a paramedic, so tell us who you are. My name is Sydney May, and I'm an EMT. With who? With Brandy Scott from with Bay County. All right, and Brandy? Brandy Scott, I'm a paramedic, Bay County with Lifeguard. All right, uh, what do you guys like about the life saving business? Uh, well, it's rewarding when you save lives, and we work with great people, so it really makes it easy. All right. 
Yeah, the same. We work with a great group of people and we enjoy helping others and, and seeing the families after we've helped someone. All right. Well, thanks for coming to Chipola today, guys. Thank you. We're here with Charles Clayton, and he is the director of the firefighting program here at Chipola College. Yes, sir, that's correct. How you doing today? I'm doing good, doing right. good. So I understand uh, you were full-time, and now you are our part-time director, and you also have a full-time job. Tell us tell us about that. Uh, pretty much, uh, I hold it, uh, don't mind. Uh, pretty much, I'm the full-time uh, fire medic and inspector over in Madison County. Uh, also a hazmat tech team member with Bay County Fire Rescue in Panama. Now tell us about the firefighting program at Chipola. How long does it take and uh, what do you need to qualify to be in it? Pretty much to qualify you need to be a graduate of a high school uh, with a high school diploma or a uh, equivalent GED. Uh, pretty much you go through a rigorous background check. Uh, also uh, you do a physical, uh, make sure you're physically fit uh, for duty over here. Uh, pretty much the program is uh, four months for a day class, uh, six months for a night class. Uh, pretty much you can uh, see the, the college website to get my email. Uh, we'll respond back within a day. Also get some information on that. All right. And are there plenty of jobs available? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, right now we had 21 students graduate out the last day class. Out of those 21, we had 18 uh, get a job within two to three weeks of being out of school. Fantastic. All right. Well, Clayton, thanks so much for coming today, and we, we appreciate what you do for Chipola College. We appreciate y'all. Have a good day. Sergeant Jeter, I know that um, correctional officers start out at a pretty good rate of pay with some good benefits. Tell us about those. Yes, they do. Um, once you're certified, you can start out making $33,500 a year. While you're getting certified, we do offer it's full pay, it's roughly around $1,200 bi-weekly, and that's before you're certified. But once you're certified, um, it'll be roughly around $33,500 a year. Um, okay, so... In 12 weeks, someone coming out of the department, of, coming out of a correctional officer program, can expect to make $33,000 a year. That's correct. Wow, fantastic! Well, great opportunity here, and thank you so much, Sergeant Jeter, for coming out to Chipola today. Thank you. Thanks for having us. All right, we're here with Elijah Hooks and Sierra Jones from Chipley High School. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right. How, what do you think about it today? I feel like it was a very informational program out here tonight. Very good people, very good first responders. It, it gave us a more in-depth look on what first responders go to on a day-to-day -day basis, and it really gives a deeper appreciation for what they do in our communities. Fantastic. And Sierra, uh, you're, you're a familiar face. You played softball here at Chipola. What do you do at Vernon? Um, so I'm actually at Vernon and Chipley High School. I am their career counselor. Um, so we've had a fantastic day just walking around and uh, allowing our students to kind of be hands-on and see everything that first responders do. So we've had a great day so far. All right. Elijah, have you decided what you want to be when you grow up? Well, uh, this definitely gave me a lot of options, but I am definitely considering the law enforcement and um, field, the first responder field, because th this program really gave me a lot of in-depth information regarding law, law enforcement. It gave me different options and different different types of information regarding each law enforcement office. You really don't get to know that much about law enforcement officers without having to be in trouble. But exactly. coming coming here, talking to them, and they are really they're person. Everybody's person, so it's more getting a more personable aspect of law enforcement, different first responder agencies here in Florida. Fantastic. Well, Elijah and Sierra, thanks for coming today. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thank you, sir. We appreciate you.